So the foundation story is very simple. About 10 years ago, we thought about that we need to work with the arts, bring arts in public domain, work through the arts and see how through contemporary concerns, art can actually be the medium and a protagonist to bring people together, to create a dialogue and to bring arts, artists, serve the wider community, right? So the core of the foundation is inclusivity, collaboration, contemporary concerns, and collective learning. And the process, if there's one thing we are wanting to achieve is plurality. So perhaps the first pioneer was to just exist, to see what the realities are, to see how we need to, to work and navigate these fields. So I believe the second pioneer was to actually go by the book, invite a curator, do the pioneer with the proper code and conduct, create a network. Hoor, what she did for the second edition was fantastic. What she did for Pakistan was amazing. We had a footfall of five million people who came to see the biennial. We had invited artists from, you know, we had 83 artists from across the world for that last biennial. It was huge, it was big last time. This time it's going to be more focused, more deep, more intense and the way that we would like to actually then further elaborate on the vinyl is by inviting collateral events which is why we've invited a lot of people we want to give out an open invitation for people to to be in conversation with John and create um, projects ideas that they have throughout the city so that a version of Basan that we can celebrate together can be realized through the biennial, at the time the biennial. So what does it mean to do the third biennial? The third biennial for us is about situating ourselves, positioning ourselves, and to try and as an institution decide what do we want to do. So how did we arrive to an ecological pineal and why do you want to see an ecological pineal? I think in two, right after the first pineal in 2018, we realized that the, the smog and the ecological effects of the climate we could start seeing in our city. When we researched, we realized we've lost about 75% of the tree cover and by investigating further, we realized that we need to plant about 8 million trees, indigenous trees, to actually recover the loss. So there were lots and lots of, as we investigated, we realized lots and lots of various kinds of losses, of bonds that were broken over time, that needed to be addressed. So one of the first things that we did as a foundation, as a counter institute, was to establish um, a collaboration with the commissioner's office and created a group called Aforestation Lahore. And the idea of this group was the civil society and government come together to work towards a joint cause. And that, mean, that meant various departments of the government, that meant various CSOs, institutions, you know, people who are working in the field to come together. And we planted about 2.5 million trees in, in our city in two years. So I think that was incredible. And today, I'm very, very proud, happy, and very honored that somebody by the name of John Tain, who is, where are you, John? somebody who's incredibly re respected throughout the world. He has a network of academics and critical thinking people that he works with, he engages with, he is informed by. And what we want to do as a foundation, we want to position ourselves for artists, for people like yourselves, who are thinking people, who are critical people, who have something to say, something to add, something to value. You know, so I think um, John is going to give us a more detailed pro, you know, um, presentation towards the end of the program where he's going to talk about the vision of the vinyl. So you guys will have an idea of what we have planned for the third edition. 
So all this work naturally had to lead, reflect towards the biennial. If, if last year, if anything, it showed us was the importance of climate and how we as a city, as a country are affected by it. We need to take charge of our own, own narrative, like I said earlier. It was only important to actually now focus on the biennial with those kind of concerns and themes so that we can actually do something collectively. I think this, if this biennial, there is one word to take forward is collective. Um, but in all this process, an economic crisis, however they are, I found one really incredible, you know, uh, person, Mr. Kamran Lashari, who already did several iterations of public art interventions in the city. And we are very happy to have a visionary like him, who is now quite, you know, going through various stages of public engagement, is trying to restore the historical places in the city of Lahore and now going elsewhere in Pakistan, trying to actually bring that knowledge, bring that skills and tools and techniques, um, which is very much needed. Or I happened to become a deputy commissioner and later parks and horticulture man. And so I was always very fond of festivals and events and carnivals and things like that. We need to open up and that's what um, my small little organization called Wall City Lahore Authority, uh, who's managing the old Lahore and uh, the fort has tried to do. And uh, you, you'll be surprised the kind of spaces within the Lahore fort, those were shut down, closed by the management that I even at my age and stage and my interest in this didn't even know about them. And in 30 years, Lahore has come a long way. And uh, in that journey of improvement of Lahore, and I must say that in 30 years, Lahore has developed in many, many ways. While we talk so many, you know, wrong things of uh, our country, but let's just reflect um, what it was and what it is today. You know, uh, some wonderful network of roads and bridges and underpasses and uh, and then greenery and the quality flowers and the fountains and chalks and churahas which we rehabilitated. We have come a long way, but I think that there is something amiss, no matter what we have done. Uh, to me, the city doesn't speak um, the language that I find in many other countries. Think, what makes a city look beautiful? Is it just the roads? and the buildings and network and all this, which we have done a great deal. So, there is something that is there is a void, there is a vacuum. We do not have public spaces which bring people together. And uh, when I look at the West and places that we go and admire, there, it's not necessarily um, Trafalgar Square, hai, Lister Square, hai. Ab jay, ab do hai. So there's something in the environment which breathes so much of life, so much of spirit, so much of bringing people in a very free, easy, relaxed atmosphere and knitting them together. When you connect buildings and backdrop with the people, that's the best combination. One without the other is incomplete. You may make a most beautiful building, uh, preserve it, make it a heritage, world heritage site. But if the people are not there or if the people are there but not connecting it and experiencing it in a manner which make it a wholesome experience, then, then uh, something is amiss. So in this context, I think uh, whatever efforts we have been doing, but a very new, very invigorating, very creative and forceful thing has happened in Lahore in the last few years, and that is through Bainare. There's a basements or summer palace. 
the Mughals had built on one side, there's the northern side, all the way, Shish Mahal ke niche hai, or it runs to the other end. So, it is a, a huge space lying shut down and band management for 150 years. Uska ek portion hum ne pol rakha hai, which is maybe just one tenth of the whole place for selected tourism. And that's where Binale uh, chose to hold a lot of its installations so that people could come and see. But now the good news for you is that uh, we have got some funding. We are starting a project called the Buffer Zone of Lahore Fort and the, and the uh, Fort Rejuvenation. Without elaborating too much, I must say that uh, we feel proud, uh, despite many, you know, uh, inhibitions, criticism, uh, Wall City has opened up its spaces. Lahore Fort, for the first time, I can say, in 300 years or more, has been permanently lit up. Uh, when Men Binale approached us, we, and I could make out the quality, the creativity, the standard that is coming in. So we said there couldn't be a better way of uh, coming together and making people come and see the art at such uh, renowned places. So all spaces were opened up and I want to assure Binale that all spaces will be opened up, inshallah. They may be, uh, but uh, people like you are crusaders and uh, I welcome uh, uh, John, whom I have met a couple of times with you, he is the man, he is the real artist and we all should be very privileged, very happy and honored with his visit here and so hopefully this all will go well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vikash. I'll just start by saying that, you know, I think as Kudzia outlined, there are very kind of urgent reasons why uh, this particular edition of the Biennale is thinking about questions related to ecology and sustainable futures. Uh, and partly because those challenges, uh, ecological challenges, have become such an everyday uh, occurrence everywhere, um, and especially in the um, global majority, right? which is being disproportionately affected by ongoing climate crisis. And the ensuing challenges are acute, uh, especially acute in megacities, uh, such as Lahore, right? As a result, these cities face severe environmental degradation, uh, poor air quality, uh, lack of water, uh, loss of open and green spaces, uh, not to mention noise and light pollution. The environmental conditions exacerbate other challenges, right? So in other words, they're not just problems in and of themselves, they also link with other problems as well. And uh, so these other challenges that urban communities face from lack of meaningful educational and employment opportunities, uh, lack of uh, compromised housing and transportation, and um, basic amenities, right? And all of which have been compounded by the pandemic, of course. Um, so these problems, have, of course, reached a tipping point in Pakistan in the past year. As the catastrophic floods and the subsequent displacement of millions of farmers um, have aggravated already serious social and ecological problems, showing how rural uh, regions of Pakistan and South Asia also share and face uh, these acute problems, right, like the megacities. So in uh, tackling this topic, the Biennale artists are being invited to address these present issues. Um, at the same time, in bringing together artists from around the world, and especially from global majority to Lahore, the Biennale also underscores that Pakistan is not alone, right, in confronting challenges brought on by climate crisis, and that, that it has much to in common with other places, and that solidarities across exist across national lines. So I want to talk a little about the methodologies that are informing the research and the thinking behind the, uh, the Biennale, this coming edition. And one of the um, keywords has to do with sustainability, right? And I think uh, so by now, I think most of us probably have heard sustainability before and think we're familiar with it. And obviously it implies a certain 
way of living that is does not live beyond one's means, right? Does not exist, exhaust resources that are available. Um, and how does that, you might want to ask, ex apply to a thing like a Biennale, right? The Biennale was not created with a kind of purpose-built, you know, Kunsthalle or exhibition space. It really was about exploring the city and understanding the city and bringing the city and art to the people of Lahore, right? So in what is already there. And so there's that aspect of the Biennale, uh, Lahore Biennale, which is already uh, thinking about these questions about conservation and preservation, right? And thinking about that aspect of the city or, and the urban fabric. But I think it's also about, and here you can see one of the kind of more uh, spectacular sites, the Shish Mahal, right? Uh, which is part of the uh, Walt Fort. But I think it's also about thinking about different parts of this, uh, the older city. And here you see um, two pictures of the Walt City. One which I think is meant to be the narrowest uh, street, right? And another of the rooftop porches, right? And I'm showing you this because I think that, you know, part of what's been so informative and really kind of um, uh, meaningful in exploring the city uh, has been thinking about the texture of the city itself and how that might be uh, a player or a kind of a take apart in the development of the Biennale. Um, beyond, I think, simply hosting the artwork or hosting the, the, the artists, right? And letting them have their ex express themselves. I think that there's ways in which the city itself is a kind of a, a, an actor in all of this, right? And what do I mean by this? I think uh, I, I want to kind of illustrate this by thinking with you about these two uh, images of the walled city. Because when I saw the walled city, uh, you know, one of the things that struck me was that the, you know, not necessarily intentionally or deliberately, but over the over the centuries. You know, the design of the walled city, I think, responded to the natural uh, climate of Lahore, right? So what we're talking about, for instance, is the, um, the way that the city is, of course, very dense. The walled city is very dense and closed in. But, you know, that closed inness men means something in terms of um, uh, energy usage, right? In the winter, it's easier to keep warm when um, buildings are close together. In the summer, the, sh the uh, closeness of the buildings provides shade, right, and put, uh, keeps people from being exposed to the sun more than necessary. And then in the second picture, we can see, you know, the way that um, these rooftops also served as steep sleeping places traditionally, right. And so these kinds of features of the walled city are already kind of suggesting that there is a, a, a local or um, an indigenous knowledge, right, which is to be foregrounded and taken into consideration in thinking about how we develop in the present um, an eco-consciousness, right? And if ecological and urban issues are increasingly global ones, you know, um, it's this way that, you know, we have to think about the local forms of knowledge and practices and how they can be resources in addressing challenges that face us today and face us in the future, right? And so the heritage, in other words, is part of the dialogue, is going to be part of the conversation not just a backdrop, but really kind of an active participant. I want to also share with you, you know, another kind of location that, you know, I've been thinking about, um, which is the Shalimar Gardens, which is, of course, justly famous as one of the most, you know, um, revered sites in Lahore, um, built during the era of Shah Shahan. And I think it's, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm standing in front of the Aga Khan Foundation. I don't think I need to explain the significance of the building to all of you here. But um, I think that, you know, when we think about this building, it's been in terms of design, it's been in terms of architecture, it's been in terms of beauty, it's philosophy, but, it, and also the ingenuity of the engineering, right? Because not only is this an amazingly beautiful realization of um, garden philosophy and the idea of paradise, but it's also something which was designed uh, in a way that, you know, we, they didn't have this term, but now we could call carbon neutral, right? Because it was functioning through gravity, it was functioning through um, non-electricity using means, right? And so that in itself is kind of an interesting fact and something that maybe we can kind of think about in terms of what does this mean how is this a possible um, resource for thinking about how we design in the future, right? And 
what we do about our, the choices we make. But then I think it, there's an added poignancy um, when we realize, and this is something which maybe hasn't been so much of the conversation about the Mughal heritage, which is that during the period when this was being constructed in South Asia, there was um, a, a, a centuries long drought, right? And in fact, in the mid 17th century, that is to say around the time that this, uh, the Chalmer Gardens was being built, there was actually the, uh, the, it was the period when South Asia saw the weakest period of monsoons on record, right? And so all of this kind of ostentatious display of water and the deployment of water for demonstrating both power, of course, because you know it's the Mughal Empire, right? But it's also about evoking beauty and evoking kind of the possibility and the promise of joy. That deployment of water at such a moment, I think, is given added significance when we take that into consideration, right? So in other words, the eco-consciousness that this Biennale is seeking to develop is not just about the present, and it's not just about the future, it's also thinking about what can the past show us about eco-consciousness and how can we work with that, right? These issues are something that are, is not just affecting South Asia, Pakistan, but also affecting other parts of Asia, other parts of the world. And I think that you know, what we can do with this edition of the Biennale is use the platform to generate conversations, not just here, but with partners from elsewhere. And so the, sustain the sustainability that we want to implement is, you know, partly working with local partners, you know, such as the Walled City Authority but, and others, but also with partners around the world, right? So we're already in conversation with different biennales and other exhibition uh, projects that are taking place about co-commissions and partnerships, uh, as well as with other art spaces and organizations to kind of think about ways to create a kind of long-term engagement, which isn't just about you know, something that will take place in February uh, and then disappear, but something that will be a resource for all of you uh, to, in the years to come. Finally, I want to kind of uh, introduce another term, which is in addition to sustainability, which is agency, right? Because I think, you know, I showed you that picture of um, the Sin Valley, um, you know, to start because in some ways that has been an incredibly um, uh, disempowering image and representation of Pakistan. It's not a false one, right, in terms of what has happened, but it's also become a kind of a stereotype. Pakistan is this place which is, you know, um, the victim of global, uh, global warming, but has no power of its on its own to do anything about it. And I think that that's something which, you know, needs also to be countered and, and worked against, right? And I think that, you know, um, it may seem like it's um, a little, you know, a bit of a stretch to think that art is the site of an agency, of giving people agency, but I think this Biennale is seeking to do is to really not just, you know, sh bring artists and show you what they can do, but also give all of you space to show us what you can do. And so I think that, you know, I'm looking forward to working with all of you and working with the LBF.